Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar titled Realize Better NGS Results Through Gentle Cell Sorting. I am Michelle Ashton of LabRoots, and I'll be your moderator for today's event. Today's educational web seminar is presented by LabRoots and brought to you by Milkenny Biotech. To learn more about our sponsor, please visit www.miltonybiotech.com. Let's get started. Before we begin, I would like to remind everyone that this event is interactive. We encourage you to participate by submitting as many questions as you want and any time you want during the presentation. To do so, simply type them into the Ask a Question box and click Send. If you have trouble seeing or hearing the presentation, click on the Support tab found at the top right of the presentation window or report your problem by clicking on the Ask a Question box. This presentation is educational and thus offers continuing education credits. Please click on the continuing education credits tab located at the top right of the presentation window and follow the process to obtain your credits. I now present today's speakers, Kui Nguyen, a graduate student researcher at the University of California, Irvine School of Medicine, and Felix Epler, the Global Product Manager of Cell Sorting at Milton e. Biotech. For a complete biography on our speakers, please visit the Biography tab at the top of your screen. Queen and Felix, you may now begin your presentation. Yeah, thank you very much for the kind introduction, Michelle. My name is Felix Epler. I'm the Global Product Manager for the MaxQuant Title Cell Sorter at Milton e. Biotech. And today uh, we would like to talk about how gentle cell sorting can um, lead to very solid and um, good results in NGS or single cell genomic analysis. Our talk will be divided into two parts. Uh, the second part will be presented by Kui. He will talk about uh, his research on murine memory epithelial cells and how he utilizes single cell RNA sequencing technologies as well as cell sorting technologies in order to gain the maximum out of his experiments. In the beginning, I would like to give a short introduction on gentle cell sorting upstream of next generation sequencing analysis. And of course, I would like to focus on the MaxQuant title by doing so. So let's first have a look on NGS or single cell genomics application areas in general. As you all know, these both technologies are really, really important and are utilized in lots of different application areas, starting from basic research in, for example, cell biology, immunology or developmental biology, but also going into translational or clinical fields such as cell therapy, cancer research, metabolic disorders, or in the moment, very important, also the research on infectious diseases. At Milton e. Biotech, we are actually focused on providing products which uh, allow for a very gentle and proper um, sample preparation upstream of NGS and single cell genomics analysis. I would like to shortly highlight the GentleMax dissociators, which can be utilized if you start with um, solid tissues such as brain, for example, or um, tumors, and want to generate a single cell suspension. But also coming from blood products, we have um, several interesting um, products for straining and clearing. Coming to a next step, an optional step, that is, of course, only important if you're interested in specific target cells, and that is the cell isolation or cell sorting. Cell isolation uh, via our MAX technology, um, so via magnetic beads, um, can be utilized. Here we have an example for tumor infiltrating leukocytes, which have been enriched uh, based on their expression of CD45. If you're interested in uh, multi-parameter analysis or sorting of the cells, flow cytometry is a very good way to go. And here we offer the Max Quantito cell sorter in order to sort your cells based on multiple parameters on a very gentle way, so you get out very viable cells in very high purities, as you can see in that example given for the natural killer cells. 
Coming from those technologies then to your downstream analysis, uh, you can proceed with your NGS or single cell genomics analysis. And today we of course would like to focus on the max quantito, so the cell sorting step prior to NGS or single cell genomics. So why is it in general important to uh, sort your cells prior to these analysis? Of course, the very obvious reason is you're interested in enriching a specific target cell population and thereby to improve your reads. This can be done based on expression of specific markers on the cells, but also based on their size or granularity. Another important factor why cell sorting should be applied uh, upstream of single cell genomics analysis is the exclusion of dead cells and the removal of debris. Both can actually um, uh, contribute to a high background uh, by um, extraneous DNA or RNA contaminations, for example, and thereby leads to high costs. So you can actually decrease your costs by sorting your cells upstream of your very expensive single cell genomic analysis. But cell sorting also can come with some associated problems. First, lots of the cell sorters which are currently available in the market have a very harsh sorting procedure, the so-called droplet cell sorters. These can, dependent on um, your cells of interest, again lead to dead cells, and uh, those dead cells might end up in your precious sample, and if you're only analyzing, let's say, 10,000 cells in the end, if you have 60% uh, viability only, you have already 40% uh, of dead cells in, and this also leads to very uh, high costs in the end. And of course, DNA and RNA contaminations can also here lead to high backgrounds or false results. A second problem is that due to the stressful sorting, gene expression artifacts can be generated, and that might also lead to false results, specifically if you're interested in markers around stress, activation or metabolics, for example. Um, another important factor to consider is uh, timely delays. A very uh, yeah, difficult and slow processing might also then again lead to gene expression alterations in your target cells and thus again to false results. So uh, it is all about circumventing and, uh, these problems, and we think we have a very nice solution with a max quantito cell sorter. So I would like to introduce to you the instrument itself. The title, as you can see here, is a benchtop cell sorter with a very small footprint. It comes with um, two different screens, and uh, a very important factor is actually that you can control the sorting temperature between 4 and 25 degrees of Celsius. I said before, uh, we can sort our cells based on multiple parameters up to 10 in the max quantito. The instrument comes with three different lasers and you can sort uh, based on uh, up to eight fluorescence channels and two scatter channels, which uh, provides full experimental flexibility and um, a possibility of multi-parameter sorting. Unfortunately, due to time reasons, I cannot go into too much details concerning the specifications of the instrument. But if you're interested, please visit our website. Uh, there you can find our image browser or the user manual, which contains all the necessary information. Or you're always welcome to contact us. Here you can see the Max title cartridge where all the sorting happens. So the cells won't leave this cartridge during the sorting process. We divide three different chambers in this cartridge. On the left-hand side, we have the input chamber where your cell suspension of interest is filled in. In the middle, we have a positive collection chamber where the positively collected cells will end up. And on the right-hand side, we have the negative collection chamber where all the rest will flow through. It is important to mention that we don't have any waste, so you can always regain your cells from the negative collection chamber and run them again through another cartridge if you uh, want to sort uh, another population out of your sample. A mixing propeller in the input chamber prevents the cells from settling down. Where all the analysis and the sorting actually takes place is the microchip at the bottom of the cartridge. And on the right-hand side of the slide, 
you can see on the bottom view um, and in a zoom the microchip itself. I would like to show you this comparison here to make you aware like how small the microchip really is. And if we zoom in, we see that uh, there's actually some channels inside this microchip. So if the, if the cells come from the input chamber uh, onto the microchip, they enter this on the lower left-hand side. Um, they run through the sorting channel where they also pass the lasers. They're analyzed and in a, pay, in a case of a positive event, a magnetic pulse opens a microvalve, which then simply redirects the cell into the upper channel. So the cell ends up in the positive collection chamber. We can have a look on that um, specific valve. You can see it here. So in this position, the valve actually is closed. All the sample flows through into the negative collection chamber. Now, if a magnetic pulse is induced, the valve will open and very gently redirect the cell so it ends up in the positive collection chamber. To get a better understanding um, like how this process uh, really is working, I would like to show you a short video on that um, so uh, you can really understand like where the cells are redirected and how they flow through the microchip. So now that you have seen um, this uh, animation and also the video of the very, very fast microvalve, an opening and closing cycle only takes around 30 microseconds. So the microvalve can move up to 30,000 times per second. It became quite obvious that this is a very, very different cell sorting technology if you compare it to the classical FAX, the fluorescent activated cell sorting droplet sorter. You can see um, a picture describing the technology here on the right-hand side on the slide. And uh, this technology comes uh, with uh, some problems. First of all, uh, droplet sorters are always open systems. So the aerosols and droplets which are produced are in an open space, um, which of course is a problem if you are, for example, interested in uh, going into clinical applications, but which can also be a problem uh, for example, in terms of contamination. Contaminations and sample-to-sample -sample carryover can also derive from uh, fluidics and tubings which are shared between the samples and which are inside the instrument. So the sample has to flow through the instrument um, in order to be sorted. Another problem coming with this kind of technology is the very harsh sorting process. So the sorting takes place at very high pressures in these systems, which depending on the nozzle size can go up to 70 PSI. And these are followed by a very strong decompression once the droplets, including the cells, leave the nozzles. Directly after that, a charge is applied to the cells in order to redirect the droplets in an electric field. And this is also another stressful event for the cells. And in addition, strong shear forces act on the cells during the sorting process. And all of that can, in the end, lead uh, to very high cellular stress levels, low viabilities in dead cells, also a low final cell yield belt functionalities in the cells, but also to the generation of artifacts. Now, if you compare with a, a cell sorting technology in the Max Quant title, which is microvalve mediated, we have a very gentle uh, cell sorting technology here, acting on a very low pressure of only 1.5 to 2 PSI. There's no decompression, uh, no charge applied to the cells, and only mild shear forces acting on the cells. And this results in highly viable and functional cells after the sorting process. But also the system is very safe, and that is due to its closed and sterile cartridge environment. 
There's no carryover from sample to sample as the cells won't leave the cartridge during the sorting process. There are no fluidics inside the system. And so no contaminations can come from the instrument into the cartridge. But also for the operator, it's a very safe uh, cell sorting system. And on the one hand, as I said, it's closed, but it's also not producing actively any aerosols. And this might come in, come in very handy if you're sorting uh, infectious materials such as virus infected cells, for example. So all in all, we have a very gentle way to sort cells using the MaxQuant title. And on uh, the next slide, I would like uh, to show you um, a setup we actually um, uh, built in order to uh, film the cells which uh, are actually arriving in the positive collection chamber and therefore uh, we, um, we put an endoscope uh, inside the positive collection chamber and um, you can uh, see in a video which I will show shortly um, see how uh, the cells flow into the positive collection chamber, chamber in a very very gentle way. But I'm also showing this video to make another point clear and that is that the cells are actually strongly concentrated during the sorting process because the valve only opens in that moment where the specific target cell is at the valve and then directly closes again, meaning the main um, portion of uh, the buffer will flow into the negative collection chamber. And depending on your downstream um, yeah, process, for example, uh, how you perform your library prep, if you, for example, work with uh, 10x chromium, this might be interesting because it could potentially save you um, a step of uh, centrifugation. I would also like to shortly comment on uh, the workflow we uh, see in the, uh, we apply in the MaxQuant title. Um, of course, it is a, a flow cytometry based cell sorter with up to 10 parameters. So this means, of course, um, we have, uh, yeah, uh, you have to think about your gating strategy and the antibody panel you want to use. But once you've set up your experiment, you can save the workspace and then the workflow is very, very easy and straightforward. And that is simply, you have to load the sample into the cartridge. You scan the cartridge, uh, which has a barcode, and so all the settings are already uh, set directly in the software. You load the cartridge into the temperature-controlled loading chamber, and then you just press play and can walk away. It's an operator-free sorting process. You don't have to stay in front of the instrument and check, for example, for drop delay or something like that, because this is simply not uh, needed in the tidal sorting system. Once the cells have been sorted, you can come back, collect your sorted cells, and proceed with your experiment. And in a direct comparison, this can lead to a, a hands-on time, which is up to nine times less compared to a conventional droplet sorter. And with that, I uh, come to the last part of uh, my introduction, and that is I would like to give you uh, some application examples before Kui talks about um, his research, uh, just to discuss again uh, how gentle the cell sorting process on the MaxQuant title really is. And with uh, this first example, I would like to discuss the sorting of neutrophils. And uh, everyone who already uh, worked with uh, neutrophil granulocytes knows that these cells are really, really sensitive, really fragile. They can be easily activated. Uh, they will also die very easily, so you have to be very careful with handling them. Now, here you can see the input and uh, the sort. We were able uh, to sort the neutrophils to a high purity of 98%. But uh, very important, the cells also stayed viable after the sort, 98% viability, which is already great, but doesn't necessarily tell us um, like, uh, uh, if the cells are still functional or might have been activated. So we checked the surface expression levels of um, some proteins, which are either up or down regulated during neutrophil activation. And as you can see, uh, the samples in the MaxQuant Tido, which is the orange bar, 
are uh, comparable to the one of the negative control, which is the white bar. But also functionality of these cells was uh, still fully intact. So we checked, for example, for phagocytosis or uh, the migration towards a chemokine gradient, uh, also called chemotaxis. In this case, a FMLP gradient, both very complex processes, a uh, lot of signal transduction is involved and um, mechanical interactions of proteins. And as you can see, both are still working very well. And this uh, proves that uh, also these cells have been sorted uh, using uh, the Mach Tido as a flow cytometry based cell so that they were still fully functional and not activated after the sorting process. A second example I would like to discuss um, is about sorting of uh, iPC-derived dopaminergic progenitors. Um, this data was kindly provided by Daisuke Doi from uh, the Saira Institute in Kyoto, Japan, and is actually deriving from a clinical study they are currently running uh, in order to treat uh, patients suffering from Parkinson's disease. And um, they were first working uh, with a fax uh, droplet sorter, but uh, encountered uh, some difficulties in translating into the clinics. Uh, with the title, this is much more easier because of the closed and sterile sorting environment. We also uh, offer our consumables in a GMP compliant format. So that was already great for them. But uh, they also wanted to check uh, the gentle aspect of the cell sorting because they had some problems with the expansion and the yield of their cells after the sorting process. So what you can see here is an analysis 13 days after these iPC-derived dopaminergic progenitors had been sorted. And you can see these cells are forming spheres. And the spheres in the max quantito sorted sample are much bigger. And uh, this is highly significant and comes hand in hand with a much higher cell yield of 160% compared to the other sample. And um, actually is due to um, yeah, very functional, viable cells. Um, so we have a high cell proliferation and expansion possible in the max quant title. But it's not only about uh, cell growth, it's of course uh, also about um, the engraftment of the cells, and you can also um, test this in vitro by checking the area of neurite extensions, uh, which are actually an indicative of craft survival capacity of these cells. And again, you can tell by eye that this area is um, bigger in the Maxcon title sorted samples if you compare to the Fax droplet sorter. And um, of course, this goes hand in hand with a higher craft survival capacity, uh, which is of course key for a successful cellular therapy. And that is also why the group now uses the title in uh, its clinical trial, the first uh, in-human iPSC-based uh, clinical trial to treat um, patients suffering from Parkinson's disease. And if you're interested in more details on that, uh, we can also provide a poster. Um, which had been presented by Daisuke Doi at the ISSCR in 2019. And this brings me uh, to the last slide of the introduction, and it is just um, that I would like to mention that uh, using the MaxCon title, you cannot only sort normal mammalian cells, you also can sort other stuff. We uh, frequently sort, for example, bacteria or yeast, but uh, you can also sort nuclei, which is, of course, very interesting uh, for applications in the NGS and single cell genomics context. And uh, here I wanted to, like you, uh, wanted to show you an example. You can see the input and the respective uh, sort fraction. Uh, we were able to enrich um, the nuclei uh, based on their staining on uh, DAPI and uh, marker I can uh, not uh, actually talk about because this is data we also got from a customer and uh, it's confidential, but you can see in general we were able uh, to en enrich these uh, nuclei to high purities. And with that being said, uh, I think it's time uh, to hand over to Kui so we can learn more about his research and how he utilizes uh, gentle cell sorting technologies in um, his workflow. And yeah, with that, Kui, I'd like to hand over to you and I'm looking forward to listen to your presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Felix. Um, okay, so 
Welcome. I am, I'm Kui Nguyen. I'm in Dr. Kai Ketzenbrock's lab at the University of California, Irvine, and we work on profiling the normal breast development and how um, that leads to or how the development of breast cancer is initiated, uh, mainly in human. We've also done a lot of work in mouse, and today we'll I'll talk a little bit about our efforts in that. So a little bit of background on why we do what we do. Um, so with the memory, so today I'm going to talk about the mouse system, and with the memory gland development in mice, um, at the very top panel, this is taken from a review, you can see that it's mainly a fat pad that epithelial cells grow into, almost like a tree uh, structure. And with that, you can see that the main cells that make up or the cells of interest to us are the epithelial cells. And that is because those epithelial cells are believed to be um, the cells of interest, or the, cell, the initiating cells for breast cancer. And as you can see, the bottom panel, there's a lot of supporting cells within the mammary gland. There are adipocytes, there are other stromal cells such as fibroblasts, um, there are immune cell macrophage, um, T cell, B cell, there are mast cells, uh, red blood cell, all different kinds of cell types in there. And if we really want to study just epithelial cells, what we have to do is enrich for these cells somehow and you know, continue to profile them. So in a previous published, uh, recently published paper, it's shown that there are three major cell type within the epithelial um, system or the epithelial cell. And you can see there's one basal population and two luminal uh, cell types. And within that, there are multiple cell states. So what we want to do is be able to reconstruct this within the mouse system. And to give you guys a little bit of background on our approach um, before and what we're currently testing is what we would do is extract out uh, the mammary gland from these mice, mechanically uh, dissociate them down um, to almost a single cell, pretty much a single cell uh, suspension. And what we would do is fax isolate these cells for epithelial cells before and run them on the 10X. What we were interested in seeing is is there another approach to reduce the stress that facts induce on these cells? So what we did in this test was take the same cell suspension, split it into two pool, one where we ran onto the fax machine and the other we ran on the title uh, machine for sorting. And then we ran both uh, sample onto the 10X right afterward just to see the profile. So why would we want to take the single cell approach for this? As you can see on the left, when all of the previous work uh, that has been done using bulk approach, you can see where it's just, you're just taking a sample of an average sample. So you can't really tell heterogeneity at the cell state or type level, where when we do it on the single cell level, as you can see on the right there, you can tell which cells are high for which gene, which cells are low, and be able to distinguish on the single cell level which cells are of interest and which cell are not, instead of just pulling them all together and taking an average of everything. So the sequencing approach that we take is the 10x genomics approach with using their RNA three prime uh, sequencing platform. And what that does is it takes in a single cell suspension, it generates droplet, it partitions these cells with barcode into droplet for us to be able to generate a cDNA library that's, unique, that's barcode unique for each cell for us to later be able to bioinformatically distinguish which transcript came from which cells. And as you can see with the 10X approach where it's partitioning cells into these droplets, it's very important for you to start off with a very clean um, sample that are single cell. If they're not single cell, you're going to get multiple. If they're sticking together, you're going to get a multiple droplet and that will throw off your data. Or if there's a lot of ambient RNA uh, that's put into this platform, that would also be capture. And you can't, it's very hard to tell 
uh, what's ambient or what was ambient RNA and what came from the cell. So to show you guys the importance, so these are two samples that were acquired. Uh, one on the left was uh, not sorted and one on the right was sorted. And you can see uh, this is an output from Cell Ranger where it shows the cell calling. And the sample that was not sorted had very high um, contaminating ambient um, RNA. And you can see it, reads, it takes about it, only about 50% of the sequence read were actually used or called in within the cell, while the sorted cells had about 97, 98% of the reads in cell. So with an unsorted sample, you're wasting about half of your reads, your sequencing read. Um, and at the same time, it makes it very hard for the program to tell which are cells and which are just uh, empty droplet containing ambient RNA. And in addition to that, all of your droplet that contains actual cell also contain ambient RNA to sort of cloud every your real readout. So this has been shown before, but I'll go over it again with our setup. Uh, what we did was we did this in triplicate. Um, and with the fax order, we used two different fax machines just to see if it's uh, reproducible. And the PSI that we use a 100 micron nozzle and that produces or puts the cell under around 20 to 25 PSI of pressure. Um, and while the fax sorted cell, when we ran it through the cartridge was around 1.5 PSI. So there's a big difference. And in addition uh, to the fax, the cells being compressed with about 20 PSI is the rapid decompression as it comes out of the nozzle uh, to be uh, collected into the collection tube. So this is the overall data with all six samples, so three replicates, so three uh, for facts and three for title. We collected around almost 48,000 um, memory epithelial cell from uh, the mice. And you can see what we uh, reproduced as shown before in human are the three major cell types. So one basal and two luminal population. Um, and you can see on the right there, the top 10 marker heat map for each of these cell type, or you can see that they, between the fax sorted cell and the title sorted cell have very similar gene capture. So we're not losing uh, too many important cells for either of these methods. So to go into a little bit more um, finer uh, detail analysis, what I did was I subset it on individual cell types, so basal, luminal one, luminal two, and did a comparison for their um, marker gene. And as you can see on the um, right there, there isn't too big of a difference. There isn't actually any difference between the fax and title sort itself for the marker gene. So we're able to pick up uh, traditionally what we would in fax as we do in title. And on the left there is a Tisney plot um, colored by the replicate. So you can see that the three replicates for our experiment overlaps very well. And this is uh, uh, clustered without any batch correction. So we can see that we're not introducing anything uh, major with title sorted cell or fax sorted cell. But the difference you can see really comes down to when you take a look at the content of these cells or sort of what they're expressing. So when we take a look at numbers of gene capture, UMI, uh, percent mito, you can see that's where it stands out a little bit more. With the fax sorted cells, we capture um, definitely more genes. So it's around 1,400 cells uh, for tidal sorted cells, or 1,400 genes for tidal sorted cell and around 1,200 genes for fax sorted cells. And when you move over to the UMI, so the unique molecular identifier, uh, the mo molecule, we do capture more with tidal cells, so around 3,200 uh, UMIs for tidal and around 2,400 for fax. And for percent mito, it is a little bit higher in tidal, and we believe that uh, could be due to just uh, when we run the 10x sequencing, we're capturing more gene, we're capturing more transcript, hence why we're capturing a little bit more of the percent mito, or more of those mitochondrial genes. So there was a paper that was published where they take a look at sort of a, a 
dissociation induced signature uh, in their sort of protocol and sort of see is there a signature and is that reproducible? So what I did was I took a look at that signature and scored it on our data set just to see is it higher in the title, is it higher in the facts, or is it similar? And when we take a look at those genes, we can see that the fact sort of style has slightly higher expression of these genes compared to Taito. And that was one set of genes. So what I wanted to do was uh, went online, acquired uh, sets of genes that are involved in multiple pathways, such as apoptosis, ne necrosis, autophagy, cell death, um, everything else that you see here. And what you can see is that when I scored these uh, pathway, these sets of genes for cells that were sorted on the title machine or cells that were sorted on the fax machine, you can see that fax sorted cell have slightly higher expression of these or scored slightly higher for these pathway and um, for a majority of these pathway. So that was very interesting. What we wanted, that was just sort of on the gene expression level. What we wanted to see was does that carry over? Is there something functionally different with these cells? So taking those same exact cells, actually, uh, that were dissociated, uh, split, stored on the fax machine, Tino machine, um, we took those same exact cells after running it on the 10X, or same pool of cell after running on the 10X, we split off some and we um, seed seeded these cells in matrix gel to run a mammal sphere formation assay to see uh, do we get more sphere, do we get a larger sphere, um, is there a growth difference from this uh, long term. And you can see here on the left is a quick illustration, an actual image from our mammal sphere after seven days. You can see that title sorted uh, sphere on the the image on the left there has, there's more sphere compared to the fax sorted uh, cells on the right. And the bar graph on the right there is a quantification for, the, uh, for our experiment. And overall, you can see that uh, long-term uh, experiment, you can see that tidal cells have uh, much more sphere growth uh, compared to the fax sorted cells. So, uh, Quick summary for everyone. So with our data set, our uh, experiment, we detect the three major cell types as uh, previously seen in human. And what's very nice is that we see a similar cell type between fax and Taito. So with fax, we're not losing any important cell type. Uh, we're not gaining anything too much with e either one. But what's interesting, especially for uh, next generation or the single cell experiment is that Tidal sorted isolated cells, we actually see higher gene and UMI uh, capture for these cells, while uh, with the fax um, isolated cells, they're, introdu they're introduced with a lot more stress uh, throughout the entire process. So we, we do see a slight in, uh, induction of these stress response gene. And functionally, what's very interesting is we see that tidal sorted cells form more mammosphere and that's very important for a long-term experiment or if um, these cells are of interest and you need them to grow up. So um, thank you, and we'll take any questions. Thank you, Kui and Felix, for your informative presentation. We will now start the Q&A portion of the webinar. If you have a question you'd like to ask, please do so now. Just click on the Ask a Question box located on the far left of your screen. We'll answer as many questions as we have time for. Okay, this first question is for you, Felix. How many cells can be loaded into a Taito cartridge and how fast can they be sorted? Hi, yeah, that's a very interesting question. So um, the maximum um, cell amount we actually describe for the maximum Taito cartridge is um, like, um, <clears throat> 50 million uh, cells per milliliter, and um, you can load up to 10 milliliters into one cartridge, which makes 500 million cells per total cartridge. That is, of course, the upper maximum we state, and um, the whole system runs with uh, four milliliters per hour, 
uh, soon we will have a, a second cartridge type which will allow uh, sorting with eight milliliters per hour at the same maximum cell density. So um, cells can run with 55,000 uh, per second through the system and in the new um, cartridge type with up to 110,000 per second. Um, the maximum sort rate, which really uh, in the end makes uh, sense, uh, is around probably six, 6,000 per second. Thanks, Felix. This one is also for you. Can you also combine cell sorting on the MaxQuant Taito with cell isolation via magnetic feeds? Yes, actually, uh, you can do so. And we have also several customers, um, research as well as clinical, which are combining either, um, for example, the Automax Pro and uh, the Taito or even the Clinimax Prodigy and the Taito. And it often makes sense if you have start with, um, yeah, I don't know, a very big amount of cells like Glucopack, for example. So you can do a debulking step um, on uh, the max-based technologies, and then uh, to pick your um, yeah special target populations of interest, maybe also based on multiple parameters, and you want to sort them to high purity, you can go then afterwards into the title. So yeah, they are compatible. Wait, why do you think the title sorted samples contain a higher amount of captured genes and UMI? That's a very good question. So when we initially ran with facts, we, I realized um, you know, running through all of the fluidics, compression, decompression, all of this pressure change really you know, has to have some sort of effect on our cells. And we believe that it's probably mainly due to that. Um, that's why you see lower capture in uh, facts sorted cells where these cells are being squeezed and they're let go through all of these change in pressure. And what I would like to remind everyone is that our epithelial cells are fairly robust. Um, they, you know, handle facts. They can sit around for a little bit longer. And we've worked a lot with also, uh, like Felix mentioned before, uh, nuclei and neutrophil where the cell type are a little bit or the, uh, whatever you're sorting through, especially for nuclei, are a lot more sensitive. We do see a lot of loss in gene capture when we run them through facts. Um, and that's probably due to the change in pressure. Um, same same thing where there are multiple research where they have shown where uh, harsh pipetting or anything along that line. So uh, sheer force would uh, really reduce cell viability and also gene content. And with the tidal system where you're sort of just flowing these cells through a chamber with very low uh, PSI, so low sheer force, uh, really no change in pressure. Um, you're preserving that cells uh, and its content a lot better. Great, thank you. Okay, Felix, this one is for you. What if the samples of interest are really dirty and contain a lot of debris? Can you still sort this on Taito? Yes. Okay, this is a very good question as well. So, um, of course, those uh, kind of samples are much more demanding and um, one should consider maybe also having some extra steps in the sample preparation prior to going into uh, the MaxQuant title or any uh, sorting system, which could be, for example, a FICO uh, gradient centrifugation or also, for example, um, uh, isolation uh, via max speeds before you go there. But uh, in general, um, uh, before we fill uh, our sample into the MaxQuant title cartridge, we go through a pre-separation filter of uh, 20 uh, micrometer uh, mesh size. And inside the input chamber, before the cells flow onto the microchip, we have an extra three-dimensional filter system implemented also uh, to prevent um, yeah, debris uh, or, um, I don't know, free DNA aggregations or something like that from um, yeah, getting into the uh, sorting channel and clogging it or the, the microbus. So in general, yes, you, you can do so, but uh, depending on how um, dirty your sample is, you should consider um, yeah, implementing some extra sample preparation steps. Now, do you need a biosafety cabinet to run Taito with infectious material? 
Yeah, that's a, that's a very interesting question. Of course, uh, also during these specific times currently. Um, so what we really have here is a cell sorting instrument, which is not producing any aerosols or droplets actively as droplet based cell sorters do. Um, and uh, it's inside a um, closed cartridge system. So that is a very high level of safety already. Of course, we have an opening and a closing, and that is through an 0.1 micrometer sterile filter. We just pump in uh, air, which then presses the um, uh, liquid through the microchip. Uh, and in the um, positive or negative collection chambers, uh, this air um, has actually to get out of the cartridge again through 0.1 uh, micrometer um, sterile filters, which are actually also hydrophobic from the inside. So it is very unlikely, depending on what you're sorting, that anything um, gets out because no aerosols are produced. And um, we are uh, in a quite closed system with very, very small uh, openings, uh, which are in addition hydrophobic. Uh, but of course, uh, this is um, yeah, depending on the material you're going to sort and uh, also depending on the risk assessment of our customers. So um, um, there's no definite answer to that, but uh, what we for sure can say is that uh, we have an increased level of safety due to the absence of aerosols in the closed system. Great, thank you. Okay, Kui, this is a three-part question, so let me know if you need me to repeat it. Um, how much time was passing between the sorting step and the library prep using 10X? And do you expect the stress response even to increase after more time has passed? Now, might this be connected to the lack of manosphere formation using conventional SACS sorting? Okay, so the first question, how much time was passed uh, between sorting and the library prep? And uh, when this experiment was originally ran, we wanted to move as fast as possible to be able to uh, preserve any, uh, pre prevent any uh, gene changes and preserve its native state as much as possible. So it was pretty much uh, about 30 minutes from the fast or tidal machine onto the 10X for RT. Um, and I guess the second question is, do you expect the stress response gene to uh, an increase in any way if, if there was, I guess, more time to elapse. And definitely, um, we, we can see that, you know, if cells were to sit there, um, they, will, they will change, hence why uh, when everyone, anyone who works on uh, single cell sequencing or anything that's very sensitive along that line, they want to move as fast as possible and to in, in, introduce as little change as possible. And running these cells either on the fax machine or on the title machine uh, does introduce a little bit of stress. And I believe that if the cells were to sit there for a little bit longer, those uh, stress response will have time to actually be able to kick in and increase and actually we'll see a greater difference. Um, so I guess especially important for those who either can't get their cells onto the, sort of the sequencer as fast as possible or those who um, have long-term experiment. I guess that comes to the third part with the mammosphere, if this is tied in any way with the mammosphere formation. And it looks like there, it definitely does where we see that uh, cells that are ran through sort of the additional sorter with the, the fax isolation, you can see that a lot of the gene uh, which is lost during that process. Um, so recovery for these cells might be a little bit longer and um, I guess depending on cell type recovery might not ever be possible. So with our memos reformation assay, we can see that potentially a lot of these cells that uh, could potentially form memosphere either uh, die off or it takes them longer to recover and to uh, form memosphere. Um, that's why about after seven days, we see a lot more um, memosphere with the tidal sorted cells. Thanks so much. It looks like we have time for one more question. This one's for you, Felix. Is enrichment of rare cells, for example, 0.1% target frequency possible as well? That's actually a quite short answer. Yes, it is. So you can easily go in a, yeah, 
in a quite straightforward uh, one-step sort already to quite high purities, uh, easily over uh, 95% or percent or even higher. Um, you can also actually um, implement like a debulking sorting step first on Taito to get to higher purities and then with a second step, for example, to very high purities as well. So that depends a little bit on the sample. We have um, several customers working with, uh, for example, MSCs um, or t uh, coming from primary uh, materials, which have very, very low frequencies. So yes, this is possible. Great, thank you, Kui and Felix. Do either of you have any final comments for our audience before we go? So maybe from my side, um, if you're interested, of course, in um, the MaxQuan title cell sorting technology, uh, you can always contact us at Milton Biotech. Um, you can contact your uh, local sales representat representatives. And um, yes, uh, we're really happy to uh, have the opportunity to talk about um, um, uh, our research and technologies here, and I also would like to thank Kui for his really nice presentation and very interesting data. Um, I learned a lot, and uh, yeah, I enjoyed the time. Thank you. I guess from my side, uh, thank you everyone uh, for tuning in to the presentation today. Uh, thank you, Felix. Thank you, Michelle. Um, I guess it really comes down to uh, taking a look at your cell type um, that you're interested in. Um, obviously, some will probably benefit a lot more uh, from a gentle sort. Some will benefit the same and some will probably benefit less. But overall, um, with our fairly robust uh, cell type, you can see uh, the results that we got. Well, thank you both again. Thank you for your time today and your important research. We would also like to thank LabRoots and our sponsor, Milton Mead Biotech, for underwriting today's educational webcast. Before we go, I'd like to remind the audience that they can submit questions um, during the on-demand period, and those will be addressed by the speaker via the contact information you provided at the time of registration. This webcast can be viewed on demand, and LabRoots will alert you via email when it's available for replay. We encourage you to share that email with your colleagues who may have missed today's event. Until next time, goodbye.